And now I'd like to invite Kara Jackson up to the purple rug. Title of her talk, Data for Improvement. First of all, I just want to say I'm so inspired by hearing everyone's stories today. This is going to be about data. Um, so I think we could all agree we live in an age of data. There's big data. I just learned there's small data. There are databases. There's data breaches. I now am reminded on my iPhone how much screen time I engage in. I can see how many steps I walked. <laughs> Not as, enough as, as many as I should. Um, you can see your heart rate. You can see your calories you burned, et cetera, et cetera. The point is we are at a time where we are just constantly being provided with data. And I think from some folks' perspectives, inundated by data. I don't know about you, but I often feel like this. It's also amazing when you do a Google search for images, like swimming in data, drowning under data. I mean, all of the, the ways in which data is just on top of us in many, many ways. And this is alive and well in education. So schools have become hotbeds of data generation. There's attendance data, there's data about suspensions, there's data about students' performance in, assess, um, in various subject matters like mathematics, which is what I focus on. And I think on their own, it's not that all data is bad or that these data are not useful, just like data from your personal phone, they can be useful. However, um, I think there's a lot of evidence now that the data that we're primarily being given in schools is really has been designed for accountability purposes. As folks at the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching have argued, most of these kinds of data are not that useful when you're trying to improve what's happening between teachers and students on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're really trying to get at the core of schooling, what's the heart, what's the daily work that we do. Um, I've had the privilege of partnering with a number of folks um, teachers, coaches, school leaders, central office leaders um, in several districts across the country for a good 10 years or so. And these folks are really trying to fundamentally improve what happens in middle grades math classrooms. They want these classrooms to be places in which students are investigating novel problems. They're using mathematics to investigate issues that are personally meaningful. They are sharing solution strategies. These students are coming to see themselves as people who do mathematics. They're also seeing their peers as people who do mathematics. And more generally, just as people who have meaningful and worthwhile ideas that we should all be listening to. And doing that kind of work, really trying to fundamentally transform what's happening in math classrooms is really hard work. It's hard work in part because it runs counter to how mathematics has operated in most US schools for decades. It requires learning on the part of everyone, not just students, but teachers, coaches, school leaders, and so forth. And our partners routinely said, and the data we have, it doesn't really help us do that kind of work. And so with them, in collaboration, we said, well, it seems like it's not the idea that data is always bad. We do want information about what's happening. Could we try to design some alternative forms of data? And um, so with partners who are really trying to work on one facet of math instruction, improving the kinds of discussions the kids are having, we said, well, could we try to design something that would give us information about that that could actually help us figure out when we make a change in instruction, does it make a difference from students' perspective? Could we use that to track and see, do these kinds of changes accumulate into some sort of improvement overall? And so what we ended up doing was designing student surveys. They take about a minute to complete um, that are given to kids at the end of a discussion. Kids fill it out online or paper and pencil, and they answer questions like these. What was the purpose of discussion today? Did you feel comfortable sharing an idea today? Did listening to other students improve your own thinking? Did you have trouble making sense of other students' ideas today? I just want to pause for a moment and just note what it means to actually kind of take students' perspectives on what's happening in a classroom and treat that as an authentic window into teaching and as a genuine form of data that we can use to make our practice better. Teachers and coaches have been using these data to plan for instruction, to try and see, hey, we tried this today. What happened? Did it make a difference from students' perspectives? District leaders have been using these data to be able to see what's going on inside different classrooms, across grade levels, across schools, but not for accountability purposes.
for the purposes of actually reflecting on their own work and thinking what can we be doing different. So they've used these data to make decisions about um, changing the curriculum guides. They've used these data to make decisions about how do they allocate resources for professional development. I don't think any data is magical and I don't think these data are magical. They have to be embedded in really smart routines and paired with really important professional learning. Um, but I do think trying to imagine we need information, are there alternative kinds of information that can really contribute to engaging in the renewal work that CAP started us off with thinking about? Whereas I, I do think these alternative forms of data are possible, I think they have to also be embedded in a culture of learning where teaching is truly treated as an intellectual activity and in which everyone is putting their practice kind of on the table to say, what's going on in my practice? What do I wanna change? What are ways in which I can imagine and try things differently? I think it's in those cases that we can actually genuinely use data for improvement. 